all over the world, there are people who risk everything in following Jesus. I remember being challenged by a girl called Fatima from Saudi Arabia. She was in her mid-twenties and living in one of the most hostile places on earth to be a Christian. She'd not always been a Christian. In fact, she started life as a Muslim. And then through a period of searching, she actually became disillusioned with faith and, and chose atheism. She said that a lot of her friends would say, the Bible references Muhammad. And so what she did was she spent hours researching the Bible and she said, no matter where I looked, I couldn't find any reference to Muhammad. But she said, the one thing that I did feel as I read the scriptures is that God was near me and that the evidences and the information presented was true and intact. It wasn't long after this that Fatima began blogging, began getting online and writing blogs for, for her friends to read. She wanted to share her newfound excitement for God. As a measure of safety, she would do it under an alias called Rania, which translated means contented. To protect her from the multitude of insults and responses that she would get to her writings about Jesus, I remember on one occasion she received the following reply to one of her blogs about Jesus' love for the Saudi people. And it says, You worship a foolish, crucified, cursed Lord. We are not honoured by Saudi Arabian Christians. If I had you in my hands, I would slaughter you twice. Fama responded with this, May the Lord Jesus guide you and enlighten your hearts to those who become Christians, how you are so cruel. And the Messiah says, Blessed are the persecuted. And by God, I am unto death a Christian. It's this kind of faith and this kind of lifestyle that challenges me to the core. It's a bold, unashamed, a risk-taking faith. And as I think more and more about this idea of risk-taking Christianity, I ask myself, is there any other form of Christianity? Or is Christianity in and of itself risk-taking? It wasn't long after this series of blogs that Fatima decided to tell her family that she'd become Christian. You see, she said that she was sure of one thing, that they needed to know about Jesus Christ. When she told them about her decision to follow Jesus, an argument broke out amongst the family and it became heated very quickly. And the next day, Fatima returned from a family function to find that her brother had broken into her room and was actually sitting on her laptop. This troubled her greatly because she knew that the desktop picture was a picture of the cross. And she knew that many of her writings and blogs were sitting open on her desktop. She said when she walked into her room, her brother was very angry. Fatima decided to lock herself in the room as a measure of safety. And she jumped online and she wrote a blog to her followers and it it was simply entitled, I'm in big trouble. Over the next four hours, she asked all her followers to pray for her. But she also was able to write these incredible words. Jesus Christ is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Shortly after this, Fatima's brother returned to her room. 
He burned her face. He burned her back. He cut out her tongue. And he killed her. Her own brother. You know, as I think so much about her story, I, I think to myself, what's my response? I think to myself things like risk taking Christianity. Is there such a thing? Because the Bible that I read, the, the Bible that I see and hear, and the stories like Fatima. They tell me that Christianity in and of itself is defined by risk. It's defined by stepping out of comfort zone. It's defined by courage and hope. You see, it's easy to be a Christian in your head and all, sort of honour God with your words. But being a Christian in your heart and with your actions, that's the real deal. A Christian in the deepest fibre of your being. It's where faith, it comes alive and it materialises from faith into action. And your natural response to a relationship with Jesus is to express it any way possible.